Welcome to What's in the Box, Episodes of Horror with Donna and Eric. I'm Donna. And I'm Eric. And today on um, our installment of Meet the Texas AuthorCon Authors, we have C. Derek Miller. So thank you for joining us. What's in the box? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't help myself. Sorry. You know, I've never seen that movie. I have really never. Huh. I own that movie and I have never seen that movie. And I catch a lot of hell for never seeing seven. Uh, it's a great movie. It is a great the, movie. I, I yeah. think I'm holding out now just for the conversation. So I did like that with people, Braveheart. Yeah. Oh yeah. When people are like, I can't believe you haven't seen that movie. And if I go ahead and I watch it, then that conversation's over. So I do that with yeah. Game of Thrones. I have seen oh. like three episodes of the first season of Game of Thrones. So I just, I just <laughs> hey. recently, I, I held off, I held off all these years and I just recently binged it about six months ago. And I think that is the way to watch it. Uh, everybody, yeah. everybody who followed it as it went seemed to be really disappointed in that last season. But if you binge it, by the time you get to that last season, you're like, my God, I can't, I'm so happy this is almost over. And then you, you accept the ending for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You're two, two more than I got. I've only done the first. Well, first <laughs> I episode. just got, I mean, three episodes in and I kept getting pissed off because everybody was dying. Right. Well, I like uh, that though. So, I'm a fan of that. <laughs> well, it, it it does get better after that because uh, ever uh, like all the family members start having sex with each other. So you know, yeah, you, you have real, that to it's look. It's an odd vibe. <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. that to look forward to. I'm I'm sure there's like kids that won't sit in Uncle George, sit in his lap at Thanksgiving. Uh, he's a little <laughs> off, maybe. <laughs> That's too funny. So our first icebreaker question is. Jason, Michael, or Freddy? Who's your favorite? Jason, Michael, or Freddy? I am a Jason Voorhees fanatic. I, nice. I have always, I've always preferred Jason. I, I think the reason being, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing scarier than the woods. First of all, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I grew, I grew up out in the country. I did some time in the military. You spend a lot of time out in the boonies, and, uh, you know, that's. I, I've traveled a lot too. And what I've noticed the the further I get to like the Pacific Northwest, you know, there's, there's a lot of untamed wilderness out there. You know, people, anybody who says, first of all, anybody who says that, uh, that earth is the only inhabitable planet in the entire universe is crazy. It's just statistically, it can't be so, but you also think about people who are like, Oh yeah, there's, there's no way Bigfoot's real. We would have seen him by now. And I'm like, man, have you ever been to Oregon? I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of woods out there, baby. So the, the woods are creepy and uh, just Jason, I've I've always been a fan of his because I, I sympathize with him. I I root for him. Uh, those camp counselors are so damn annoying that you know I'm just like get him, get him, get him. So he's always been my guy. Nice. Yeah, I'm a big Jason fan too. I, th I just think the collection of movies are better overall. And right, did, right. I mean, Freddie's yeah. great for what he does, but I think one and three are the two that that are that stand out, and, and you can do without the rest of them. Right, the and Freddie, Freddie was always more of like dark comedy to me than yeah. than slasher. You know, uh, Michael Myers. I know there's a lot of of uh, people like John Carpenter freaks and stuff like that. You know, just oh, you know, he was the original. He was this. He was that. And uh, you know, it's it's okay. I, I go back and I watch the original Halloween about once a year. But uh, just, I mean, for the time, it was fantastic. I, it hasn't aged well, in my opinion. Uh, I can still watch the original Friday the 13th. I can still watch, like, the original six Friday the 13th movies and still be thoroughly entertained. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you there. In fact, I enjoy the second one more than I do the first one when it comes to Halloween. So, um, and then I really, if I had to choose, I always pick Season of the Witch, which... Mm. Yes, Season of the Witch is my favorite Halloween movie. Yeah. I, I love that film. I uh, was kind of hoping, you know, everybody has their opinion on Rob Zombie, of course. Uh, I really enjoyed Rob Zombie's uh, first Halloween movie. I thought that was a, a really interesting take on, uh, like, Michael Myers' upbringing, you know, because if, if you go back and you watch the original Halloween, it, it kind of looks like, you know, he, he comes from typical suburban family and he just snapped. Whereas if you watch the zombie movie, it's, you know, he, he grew up in a house, you know, with an abusive stepfather and a mother that's a stripper and just a lot of psychological abuse. And it, and it just made more sense to me. So um, second one, not so much, but I was really hoping that zombie would have just went for broke and remade 
season of the witch for like a third film you know just <sighs> yeah from everything i read he had so much trouble with uh, the studio that he just well, he wanted out he was done so he just couldn't do another halloween film he in fact from what i understand he was ready to walk away from the second one if he could so yeah maybe he should have <laughs> yeah but, well, uh... you know what i've never watched the second one because um uh, I'm not a huge Halloween guy, but also yeah. I've heard so many bad things. I just, I enjoyed his first one. So I figured I'd just leave it at that. Yeah. And one no, day it's... I'll sit down and watch all the Halloween films, but I consistently <laughs> will put on a Friday the 13th. Movie. Oh ab yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, you, you get to, you get to celebrate Friday the 13th as an actual day. I, when my wife and I were first dating, we were actually working together too. And uh, every Friday the 13th, I would, I would put on a hockey mask and ride in the passenger seat all the way through Dallas traffic to the office and just, <laughs> you know, just randomly pull up beside people. And, you know, they would either like, like, you know, like freak out or, or they would laugh, you know, I was at least making them feel something at 8 a.m. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Good times though. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely Jason Voorhees. So then um, on the same kind of idea of vampires, werewolves, werewolves, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, werewolves. Yeah. It's funny how um, many of us are big werewolf fans. So. Uh, American Werewolf in London is one of my favorite all-time films. It was uh, the first film as a child I saw that uh, I guess revealed to me that horror can also be comedy, and I loved it. I've watched it repeatedly throughout life. Um, uh, at some at some point, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop kicking this horse. But um, in my previous marriage. I was married to Lon Chaney Jr.'s great niece. So uh, huh. I used to I used to visit that house a lot and I've seen a lot of memorabilia. I have I actually have uh, I copied a Polaroid before she and I divorced of uh, Lon Chaney Jr. like sitting on a couch at her mother's birthday party. So, yeah, wow. yeah you're never going to find that stuff anywhere else. No, definitely not. Definitely uh, but not. It did backfire though because when when we got divorced, her uh, connections got involved in the divorce, and she was awarded thirty percent of all future royalties of everything I had written up to that point while we were together, which was everything I had written up to that point. So from like two thousand and seven to two thousand and sixteen, she was awarded thirty percent royalties from now until the end of time. So I took all that stuff off the market. <laughs> Smart well, move. There you go. <laughs> yep. What and was your she favorite? Paid, she gets paid like clockwork. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite scary movie as a kid? Wow. As a kid. You know, I I had one of those mothers when I was growing up that did not care what I watched. And uh I I think Halloween three was uh was my Halloween three and poltergeist. It's it's a toss up between the two. Mm. Uh both both are just amazing films and both of them still hold up rather well to this very day. But I have, uh, man, I have such crazy memories of like going to school, you know, we're talking like second grade, third grade, something like that. And just telling all my friends about these films that their parents obviously weren't cool enough to let them see. So. Right. Yeah. The yeah. cool yeah. thing about Poltergeist, that's one of the few PG movies that actually scare things. I mean, I remember yeah. there were right. things that terrify you and then you go back and look and it's, there's, I mean, it's PG. He was able. Usually, you see, oh, it's PG, PG thirteen. You're like, uh, we're not getting the best version of this movie. You know, yeah. have to wait for the director's cut or something like that. But I want to say the the, the very the very first PG thirteen film, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this is off the top of my head. The very first PG thirteen film was Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I don't think PG thirteen existed until that film was released. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, PG. But if if you go back and you watch it as an adult now. You pick up on so much more that you didn't pick up on right. as, as a kid. You right. know, um, you know, the mom and dad are, are like smoking a joint, you know, in, in the bedroom and the kids come in and they're scared and they want to sleep with them. And I'm just like, you know, I didn't I didn't know what the hell was going on when I was a right. kid and I saw that stuff. And now I'm like, I totally get it. And I sympathize. So yeah, it's amazing how hardcore some PG movies are that came right. out before PG-13. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, I remember I forgot there was nudity in Airplane. And I popped oh, yeah. it on, showed my kid, and when, the, you know, when she comes through, and I go, I did not know that was going to pop on. Yeah. I'm not laughing. You know, he's Oops. like eight years old with huge eyes. Like, okay, yeah. well, 
I remember yeah, Poltergeist, what scared me the most out of the whole movie was Tangina. Right. I don't know uh, why, but she scared me more than anything else in that movie. Zelda Zelda Rubenstein. Uh, that's that's that was her real name, Zelda Rubenstein. And she was just again, if you go back and you watch it now, I mean she she should have won something for that for that role. Uh, she only pops up momentarily in the second one, and I personally have never made it through the third film. And then we're not even gonna discuss that horrible remake um that came out in a what i guess about a decade ago but the the original poltergeist yeah just everything about that and i i come from a big paranormal invasive uh investigative background uh, that's how i originally started writing um i i was a ghost hunter started back in like 2004 and i did that stuff for like 10 straight years and it wasn't just you know cemeteries and people's houses and stuff like that. I got invited to stay the night at Six Flags Over Texas and do an investigation. And I've done the Hall of Languages at Texas A and M and courthouses and jails and you name it. I I was I did that stuff for for ten straight years. Wow, and that's, that's pretty. Cool. That's how I got started writing. Was uh, I was uh, basically keeping journals of everything that I was doing and everything that I was discovering. And uh, my my first two books, way, way, way back in the day, uh, we're talking like 2007 and 2008, they were just uh, called the Ghost Hunters Journals. And that's exactly what they were. And then uh, I want to say like in uh, 2015, 2016, I combined them both and renamed it Diary of a Gonzo Ghost Hunter, <laughs> which if, if you go, I'm a big Hunter S. Thompson fan. Um, but if you if you go to my website, if you go to cderekmiller.com, uh, you go into the uh, the shopping section on there, you can actually download uh, a PDF free of Diary of a Gonzo Ghost Hunter uh, because I'm I'm not allowed to make money on it anymore. So I just I just right. give it away to people. So wow. if, if anybody anybody wants to read like a really honest look at the field of paranormal investigation, mixed in with quite a bit of of comedy and Gonzo rants and things like that, then go to cderekmiller.com and and download it. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. I really yeah. Do. We'll put the right. link in the description so people can do that. It'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. sure. Do you have a um, now as an adult? Is there a movie that has superseded Poltergeist as your favorite? Oh man, as as an adult, um, I've I've really gone away from like uh, the psychological horror, and now what I go for is uh, special effects, and I'm I'm really a big fan of traditional special effects, makeup and squirting blood and everything. I think CGI belongs in sci-fi. It doesn't belong in horror. It especially doesn't belong uh, when it comes to creatures. There's nothing that makes me sicker than watching. You know, it, it'll take you right out of the movie if you see some some big CGI, like obvious CGI monster or creature or person. And it always they can never get the mouth right. The mouth always opens like a little bit wider than what is humanly possible, mm. and that just takes me right out of the film. So I'm, I'm super into traditional special effects in modern movies and this last year terrifier 2 made a huge impression on me i i love that film so much and uh i i've heard i've heard similar things as far as special effects go with uh, evil dead rise i haven't seen it yet but i bought it this morning i actually have it here at home i'm gonna watch it tonight so i'm looking forward to that yeah i've heard good yeah. things about that one and i yeah. thought terrifier 2 was pretty good i just thought it was a little too long they needed too to long tighten. yeah yeah Editor but his, the have... special effects are amazing and that, Absol I think that's absolutely that's what that guy's background is uh, the director damien was it damien leon, damien leon. Like yeah he uh and uh, from what i understand originally when he was doing like the all hollow eve and all that was he was trying to show off that hey i can do special effects and right he, nobody would hire him he just directed the movies but every time he did it he's gotten better and better as a director i thought this last one he actually had a really good movie just a tad bit too long if he would have tightened it too up long. he would have had a perfect movie but yeah. when i saw the first terrifier because i just threw it on netflix one night i was blown away by the practical effects i was like At, when he cuts man. that chick in half i thought holy shit yes. are you about to cut this chick in half I yeah. this is the most amazing thing i've seen in a long time yeah because you know you've seen you've seen some something similar in a uh, bone tomahawk mm -hmm. But, you know, that that's a movie that, that you know, it's a period piece, takes place in the Old West. You know, you expect to see something like that. And this is something, you know, that that happens in modern times. You know, like, I don't I don't 
know where those movies were supposed to be taking place. I it it looks like uh, you know some one of those many suburb neighborhoods of like Brooklyn or Queens or some something like that. And I've been to a lot of like what most people would think are vacant buildings all over New York city. And they're actually like artist communes and, and stuff like that. And you just, I would go in there and do art projects and artwork and things like that. And it's, it's terrifying by itself without a guy dressed up as a clown running around. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's I was... the amazing thing with art is that um, like when we discuss our first top three, you know, Jason, Michael, Freddie, none of them, none of them are sadistic. Even Freddie, in a way is, is, is seeking revenge for what happened to him. Right. It's not, or he's trying to regain his lineage or whatever, however you want to look at it, depending on the movie you're doing it. But art is simply just there to be sadistic to. Right. And it, you know, it just, well, you know, with the first movie, he's, he's just, he's a regular person, you know, a regular person doing horrible things. And in, in the modern world, that's what everybody is currently scared of right now, especially if you live in the Dallas area, as of the other day, I mean, you, you have regular people doing the most horrific things imaginable and you don't have to be wearing a hockey mask or, you know, have, have a glove with razors on it, uh, to scare the hell out of people. Now you can just be a normal Joe. And that, I think that's one of the things about terrifier that I really liked is, you know, there, there wasn't anything at all in the first one about him being supernatural. He was just, he was just a really twisted fuck. <laughs> so, uh, that's, hey, uh, I that, gotta watch those super... movies one day. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, yeah, I would. Okay. I would. Sorry, spoiler alert. Say, Somebody get no, that. No, that's all right. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I would say. I would say go uh, watch all Hallows Eve, Terrifier, and oh, yeah. Terrifier too. I'd say for just... sure. Now it's not the same actor playing Art right. in, in all of Hallows Eve, but he's still really good. And it's just that one's a real. I mean, all all the. I was shocked at how good all Hallows Eve was. I thought it was going to be very low budget and right. not really worth the time. But I enjoyed every single. You know, right? Anthology right. Even, piece. Even it's an middle, anthology movie. So even the middle frame, good. even the middle frame was creepy as hell to me. Yeah, so. they, they did a really good job with that. And then they that's where they introduce art, and then he gets his own terrifier, and and it's just they're just. I mean, it's it's like splatterpunk. I mean, that's what we discussed yeah. in scares that on the on the splatterpunk panel that that's one of the movie representations of, of splatterpunk today. Is and there needs to be more of it. Yeah. You know, there needs to be more of it. You know, I know. uh you know, everybody's talking about the writer strike and everything. And I'm like, man, you know, I just, I know, personally know a hundred or so writers that would just love to be discovered. And uh, I just, I don't, I don't know, you know, you, you think about all these people that are like, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm going to be part of the union and I'm going to write and this and that and so forth. And now you're on strike and you're not getting paid. And, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough out there. It's tough out there. And you don't, you don't think it's tough for the people who are, you know, doing this professionally, which there, there's a difference between, you know, professionally and like professionally, this is how I pay my bills. And there's a lot of people out there that are on strike right now and that's how they pay their bills. But those people deserve to get paid, man. They're writing their butts off. The streaming services have, have just, you know, milked the industry dry. And, uh, you know, I, I recently... And this is the first time in the 15 years that I've been writing professionally. This is the first time this has ever happened to me. Like I was, I was paid in advance for a project. You know, a guy reached out to me from a video game company and uh, he had read my novella, Starving Zoe. And he's like, man, our next video game is a Western and we want you to write it because, you know, we love your, the, the ranting and the crazy dialogue and everything. And we want you to write the video game. So, like, they paid me up front. Wow. And I, I spent about a month um, writing, you know, a, a novella's worth of material for this upcoming video game. So, uh, here in about two years, uh, you're going to get to play a sort of pseudo sequel to Starving Zoe that uh, has several of the characters in it. So, um, very cool. So I know yeah, Starving that's Zoe. pretty awesome. Starving Zoe's really been in the limelight here lately. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, none of my doing, but uh, yeah, it's it's just it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty neat to to see it go there. And I've also got to go to uh, a studio because they wanna they wanna give me a cameo in the game. So I've got to put on the mocap suit and do all that stuff. So that's gonna be really crazy. Yeah, that's but, always uh, fun. Yeah, that's awesome. so I'm I'm really I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, you know, um, 
for every for every move forward that you take in this industry, uh, it's it's very common where you get knocked back a step or two as well. So in in the past couple of months, I've been doing that up down up down up down. But you just got to roll with the punches. That's all yeah. there is to it. What I mean, you know, what's the alternative? Give up? No. Right. Yeah. No. So what would you recommend to somebody to read who was new to um, reading horror? Oh, someone who is new to reading horror. Uh, I would say start out uh, with with one of my, it was one of my first introductions into reading horror. I mean, I you know, I grew up on the on movies and stuff like that. Uh, right. But as far as reading horror, uh, my, my favorite Stephen King book of all time, which is about to be made into another movie, is Salem's Lot. And I say, I say that that's the perfect place to start out, you know? Um, I mean, you know, it also depends on their age too. You know, I would, if it's like a younger person, I would, I would say do the goosebumps things or something like that and work your way up into like some adult horror, but, but uh, just regular Joe off the street, never read a horror novel before. I would say probably it's a toss up between uh, Misery and Salem's Lot. That would, I think that's a perfect place to start. Yeah, those are good choices. I've never, honestly, I've never read Misery, but I have read, I actually just read Salem's Lot last year for the first time. Yeah. And it was really good. It was I creepy and atmospheric. I can't wait to see what, I mean, we we have that movie that came out. Uh, made for TV. Yeah, it was a made for TV film. And just going back to watch it today, it's like three hours of, of cringe, but <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's all we had for so long, and now there's a big Hollywood production, but it kept, it kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. I think it might have been a COVID thing, and I believe it's going to be out at the either the end of the summer or the beginning of the fall now. So that's uh, I believe if I'm not mistaken, I think or I can't remember if they replaced him or not, but I think it was going to be the same director as it chapter one, yeah, okay. which I, I I thoroughly enjoyed, yeah. Uh, it, I think it chapter two suffered from you know it the, the CGI the CGI thing just well I just thought uh, the the adults suck I mean that's the worst part yeah. of it is anything yeah. that has to do with the adults it, it ruins the story in the book it ruined the uh, the the original mini series and it ruined the the two part movie so, yeah but the so. kids stuff is always the stuff I really enjoy so it's like it's that perfect thing where it's so good that I'll suffer through the adult stuff to get right. through the story and I've read it a couple times but. Yeah, I'm always like, uh, well, and get, now there's like a, a Pennywise origin series that's going to be coming out for like HBO Max or something like that. Yeah, that so. might be interesting. Just yeah. depends on what they focus on, but yeah, I'll give it yeah. a shot. You know, is it is yeah. it Bill Skarsgård? Yeah, know, I mean, I they you really need is. to if they get him in there. I think for sure everybody needs to give it yeah. a shot because he's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of felt disloyal to Tim Curry because I love Tim Curry. <laughs> yeah, um, same. But Bill Skarsgård did a really good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of, of playing Pennywise, so I he I does was like, he does a lot. Sorry, of, Tim. <laughs> I mean, and I think a lot of it is is like his facial expressions, like the physical horror, you know, like Jim Carrey did with comedy yeah. when you know, like Ace Ventura and stuff like that started coming out. Like Bill Skarsgård as as Pennywise, just you know the 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 eye thing. That's totally him. That's not mm-hmm. that's not CGI. Um, used to scare Bill Hader. And Bill yeah. Hader would run away from him. <laughs> <Yeah>. that's, <laughs> that's a creepy that's thing so to be able to do. Great. So. <laughs> man it's so great and just the way he holds his mouth and just kind of like stares off into space just he was creeping me out so yeah 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 great great movie that first one love it yeah do you have a favorite um horror novel either now or of all time or did you have one as a kid and now a different one as an adult uh favorite horror novel one that i would just that i've read multiple times i don't i don't have like a favorite horror novel now there's there's been uh like in my adult life especially since since i've been a writer uh there there has been like maybe maybe one thing i've read more than more than once and that would probably be header by ed lee Mm -hmm. which is uh man that's that's a banger Uh, it, it it really is i even uh i know the the movie that they made is is really hard to find but uh, for my birthday last year, my wife managed to track down a, a new DVD copy of it. And uh, without me knowing, she sent it to Ed and he autographed it and everything. So I, I've never watched it. 
I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to take the disc out of the, out of the case. Mm. Nothing. I've still never seen the movie because I don't want to touch it. It's, it's right. autographed. It's beautiful. It's, it's sitting on, on my uh, bookshelf, like a trophy, you know, yeah. I, I don't, I'll probably, unless, unless I can find it streaming somewhere, I'll probably never watch it because I'm never going to crack that DVD open. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. My, my introduction to Ed Lee was uh, the big head. <laughs> oh, yeah. see, I, I had the pleasure of meeting him in 2019 and it will, it was more of, of him just speaking and, and me nodding because I was, I was just so starstruck and I, I didn't want to like fumble and say the wrong thing, you know? And he, he's like, he's at the, his back when I was doing stuff with death's head press and, uh, he, uh, he came to the death's head table and he was, he picked up uh, a copy of one of my books extinguished, which is, is out of print now. And if I can ever get off my butt and stay motivated, I'm going to re-release it under Gonzo Wolf press. But, uh, he was picking that up and just asking me questions. I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just <laughs> never introduced myself to him or, or anything, but I, and I had no idea he was even going to be at killer con 2019. Um, I, and then I found out he was there because they were giving him a lifetime achievement award. So um, it was just, it was just kind of really great to be in his presence for a while. I just, I wish I'd had the balls to say something, you know, cause that's not, that's yeah. not what killer con is. I don't, I don't, I know uh, everybody that's going to, that's going to watch this has ever been to a killer con. I totally recommend it. Um, you know, at least once to just, just be in the presence of, of all those really talented people and, and just kind of be down to earth. You know, it's killer con is, is not like Texas author con. It's going to be, it's not, you know, it's not fans, you know, who are meeting authors, it's authors meeting authors and partying with authors and comparing notes. And I mean, that's, that's how death said press was originally born. Jared Barbie and Patrick Harrison third um, met each other at um, uh, killer con 20, 18 i believe and they're like hey let's start a publishing company and there you go oh wow so yeah I, I highly recommend it plus austin is just a great town anyway so yeah I, I highly recommend that to anybody i know the tickets are on sale right now for killer con 2023 so um yeah, yeah if you're I, I big would... into writing and you wanted to hang out and just go to some panels that are all about writing and stuff it's right. a good event and you know, come to texas author con you can buy books meet authors and we have panels but i think uh, they're they're slightly different they're going to be more geared towards um the readers and right and i know yeah. there's going to be a lot of readings uh also so uh, but yeah both events are going to be awesome and that's that's a cool thing about where we are in texas we're going to have this one where we sell a lot of books you know, right. this other one where you kind of hang out and rub elbows with writers and networking maybe, and yeah so, yeah, yeah, it's it's two entirely it's different events, but they're both very important as we move forward every year. So yeah, and and uh, Texas AuthorCon. I mean, you know, I was I was at the the original last year, and you yep. know, we've we've gone from like what there was what fifteen 14. authors. Yeah, there was yeah. fourteen because somebody had couldn't come, so we had fourteen of us. You and I were 14. right next to each other, and now there's what fifty. Uh, actually, there's like 66. 66. Wow. Yeah. So man, that, that number so may crazy. go back and forth a little bit. So we may end up with just at 60. But I mean, that is amazing, isn't it? I mean, that That's, small room we were in. Yeah. And, you know, at the time, I wasn't sure last year. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, it may just be the 14 of us and we can talk and have a good time. But and it yeah. was a steady flow of readers. Uh, yeah, and, it was. It was. It was I, really fun. I did not. I didn't expect to um, to do like any sales or, uh, you know, like I just, I expected the 14 of us to just be sitting around and, and talking to each other. And that <laughs> is, that is not what it was. I mean, we barely got a chance to speak to one another. There was, yeah, just, there was actually tables I didn't get to cause I couldn't yeah. get away from my table. Yeah. You know? So it I mean, was, I, I sold, I, I, I sold so many books and met so many people that day. The only thing that I could compare it to in recent memory would have been when, uh, I had a table at a Texas Frightmare weekend and it's just a steady flow of people for three whole days. And Texas AuthorCon last year was like that on, on, on a smaller level. Now with this coming up this year, I mean, I mean, who knows, you know, if this continues to grow, I mean, this, this could be the, the Texas Frightmare weekend of books, you know, yeah. just it's, it's grown so much in a year. I mean, I yeah. can't wait to see what it's going to be like in five. Yeah, and what's what's fun and amazing about it is that it's not just horror. 
I mean, there's yeah. going to be a lot of horror representative, but we, we've been talked to Donna. I've been talking to a lot of different people that are doing fantasy and they're doing, um, you know, military thrillers. And and so there's right. anything that you're into science fiction. Uh, I think there might even be some romance this year. So yeah. Dicey uh, Grenor is um, she's like dark erotica. So, so you get some edgy romance. So it may not be yeah. like the, the normal. <laughs> yeah, I know there's, there's more than one guy doing that. Well, well more than one writer doing that. So and there's people coming from all over. It's not just yeah. authors from Texas anymore. Um, uh, oh, gosh. She would kill Donna. me. Yeah, yeah Megan. Oh, yeah, uh, Megan Stockton. Yeah. Megan Stockton is coming yeah. from, I think she's from, what, Tennessee? Yep. We've yeah. got a couple people coming from Tennessee. We've got people coming from the East Coast. West Virginia. Jason's from West Virginia. Yeah. Uh, got a couple Massachusetts. people from Massachusetts. <laughs> and, yeah, it's amazing. So, like I like to say, it's either uh, we all have Texas attitude or – worst case it's in texas so that's why it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> but it's, it's also at a good venue this year though oh, uh, yeah, i've actually beautiful i've actually been to conferences at that hotel before and uh there's if you're into public transit if you like that sort of thing there is a dart rail station right there mm -hmm. in front of the place you don't even have to take your car so, right uh, that's but, what i thought you know, was cool it's right off the highway it's right yeah. off the dart it's it's uh it's not like last year last year we had to kind of look yeah, when we yeah. were when we were going to get set up. I was thinking nobody's going to find us here. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to find. Uh, there's not going to be any accidental traffic, and everybody yeah, the, luckily was able to find the us. hotel that we were at last year. The only reason that hotel is there is because it it's right next to a tech company. I can't remember if it was like uh, Texas Instruments or if it was like a you know like a Raytheon or something like that. But you, it was plain to see like their gate was the right next to that hotel. So it's very plain to see that that hotel was built to accommodate like people who come and go with that company. It's right off right off the tollway, you know, just it was is really difficult to get there and I'm I just remember going there for the very first time because we had dinner the night before. All yeah. of us had dinner together. And I just remember looking around and telling my wife, I'm like, "Man, tomorrow is going to be a bust." <laughs> there is no way there is no way people are going to come to this thing because it's it's in it's in a crazy part of town you know you got to take the tollway to get there there's there's really nowhere to eat near there there's nothing else near it just i can't imagine anybody really coming to this thing and man those doors opened up and they proved me wrong um there's just there was just so many people there that day yeah, so merrill yeah, said that um already 200 tickets have been claimed wow yeah. Wow. Uh, that's, that's just, that's insane. So it's, it's good. You know, it's uh, what that shows you is that people in this area are starved for quality entertainment. And uh, you know, I guess that's what we're going to do. We're going to give it to them. So yeah. hopefully uh, two days worth of, of fun. So yeah, no, absolutely. So, so for the people um, that may not know your books, um, what genre do you prefer to write in? Uh, you know, I've, um, I started out like, you know, just kind of kind of lighthearted dark fiction. And then I jumped to the splatterpunk thing when, you know, I started hanging around those guys. Uh, I'm working on a, like a sci-fi novel right now. I'm just I'm just going all, all over the place uh, for a very long time. Um, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm a horror author. You know, I I, I don't want to limit myself to just that right now. I want to try a little bit of everything. So uh yeah, working on some sci-fi right now. But then I'm also working on um, you know, some some crazy extreme horror like short stories as well. So um yeah, just just all over the place. Hell, I have a children's book that I wrote four years ago that wow. I'm I'm in the process of uh I've gone through two illustrators who just uh, you know, are just way too busy to help me out. So I'm looking, I'm looking for an, for an illustrator that you know that that'll work for future royalties rather than being paid up front. But I, yeah, I wrote, I wrote a like kind of a kind of a, a dark children's uh, book about four years ago. So I, I've been all over the place, and I've I've written music that's been recorded by artists and registered with ASCAP, and I've written video games, old west uh, video yeah. game. Nice. So. Uh, yeah, you're definitely tasting, you know, getting a little bite of everything. Yeah. Know? So I mean, you know, Doesn't... we only get we only get one trip around this rock, you know. So uh right. you know, might as well might as well do it all. I I said at one point that the reason that I do all of this is because I want to have my hometown's most interesting headstone. So <laughs> you know, 
So <laughs> they might have to, you know, might have to make two of them and just connect them just to have enough room to write it all. But Nice. Uh, yeah. So when you are writing, do you have music that you listen to? It depends. It depends on what I'm writing. Um, Cause I've, I've, I've also uh, been into journalism before I've, I've had a, uh, I had my own book review column in a print newspaper every week. Um, I had an arts and entertainment column in a magazine, a monthly magazine that used to come out. Um, and if I'm if I'm writing, um, you know, like like uh, every every morning I write like Gonzo journals. You know, that's what I call them. Just kind of just off the cuff, whatever whatever's going on in my life right now compared to things that have gone on in my past life. Uh, and, you know, things going on in the media, just just kind of, you know, trying to relate to them and rant and try to understand them. I've I, uh, I've been I've been writing one of those now every day for one hundred and twenty nine days just wow. to kind of keep just to keep the, you know, the pump primed, you know, just uh, between projects. And uh, if I'm writing something like that, I, I can't listen to any music at all. Like, I, I just kind of have to just kind of go into the zone and just, you know, go, like, just, just go, 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 go. Um, and, and music it will uh, distract me. It'll take me out of that. But if I'm writing fantasy or, uh, you know, like fiction or anything like that or the horror, um, what I've always done is put on some over-the-ear headphones that, like, the loudest ones I can find. And I have a Spotify playlist that is full of nothing but like late 80s sunset strip glam metal, like hair metal. And I nice, just, nice. I, I turn that up as loud as it'll Cinderella, Warrant, Guns N' Roses, you name it, and just turn it up as loud as it'll go. And that's how I write my fiction. So I approve. I, I approve. <laughs> if I'm if I'm writing uh, if I'm writing nonfiction, uh, you know, I can't. But if I'm writing fiction, I can. I'm a little musicked out right now, though. I just, we just got in late last night from Atlanta. We went to Shaky Knees Music Festival in Atlanta for three days. So, so I'm a little, I'm a little music out right now. Also, if anybody ever imagine. gets a, if everybody, if anybody ever gets a chance to see Tenacious D live, I suggest they do it. It was one of the greatest shows. Wow. Ever. Nice. Yeah, Atlanta's great for music. Oh, yeah. This is a good time. Really good time. Yeah. Um, so, what do you got going on right now? We know about the video game. Um, right, any projects yeah. coming out soon? Any books you'll have out well, soon? Or um, I've I've already been a part of uh, three anthologies this year that are going to be released over the summer. Uh, one of them is a uh, <laughs> I just found out about this last week, and uh, I have yet to turn in the story for it. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, but I think I have it. And it's uh it's going to be uh, an anthology, a horror anthology about theme parks. Oh. It's going to be called Six 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 Flags. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm in that. I'm also in, uh, oh, it's called Shut Up and Bleed. It's another anthology with uh, Ben Blankenship or BL Blankenship, Megan Stockton. Uh, Keith Lansdale was going to be in that. And he uh, he dropped out at the last minute. Um, that's Joe Lansdale's son, duh. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've, I've never read any of uh, Keith's work, but I, I saw a movie that he wrote, um, like a like a horror western. It wasn't all that bad. Um, and uh, Christ, uh, Christine Morgan is also in that uh, anthology. That's I love her. That, Am I wrong? Yeah. Is oh, Meryl in so, that one? She's so yeah. You know he is. He is in that one. Um, yeah. um, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really good. Uh, I just went completely off the rails with the story that I wrote for that one. Um, and it's like, it's like an 11,000 word short story too. So it, it lingers. Uh, and then uh, the one for Texas author con um, headblown. Head, headblown. Yeah. yeah, I'm in, yeah that'll in that. be available soon. So, and I should be um, as soon as I stop procrastinating, I'll, I'll re-release extinguished. Do you think you'll have that of, ready for the event? I, I should, I should have it ready for the event. Um, there's just that's that's less horror and more like a kind of like a kind of like a dark superhero story. Uh, that's Ooh. that's one of uh, one of the very first people that reviewed it was Lisa Lee Tone, who we all know, who mm -hmm. is awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's yeah, one of the one of the things that she said about it was uh, somebody needs to contact DC and let them know that this is how you write a female superhero character. So uh, I've always been kind of proud of that one. 
but that one will be that one will be going. And then I've I've had a, a werewolf trilogy that I've been working on since 2010. Uh, the the first novel was ca uh, called A Taste of Home, and then uh, that was re-released. Um, I think during I re-released -re it during the pandemic, as well as the sequel Far From Home, and uh, then the final book is called Home Sweet Home, and I'm going to begin writing that one this summer. Just uh, that's something that I've all always hated. Um, I, I'm I've never been much for sequels, and I just for some reason I thought that that book needed a sequel. And then I kind of had a, a trilogy idea and I, I just, I painted myself into a corner where I absolutely have to write that book now. I don't want to ever feel obligated because that is one of the worst things that has ever happened to me in my writing career is, is to feel obligated to a project because I only like to write what I want. Right. And if I'm, if I feel obligated to it, I suddenly don't want it. And one one of the worst mistakes that I ever made was was writing a book and having it published that I didn't even want to write. Somebody else had asked me to write it, and it just it was my is my worst release ever. And I, I'm glad it's faded away into obscurity. So, uh, nice. you know, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, it'll never see the light of day again. I, I have I have a copy on my bookshelf here at the house, and I hope nobody else does. <laughs> All right. So we know um, you have your website, cderekmiller.com. Uh -huh. um, where else can people go to find your books besides coming to Texas AuthorCon? Uh, they're mostly on Amazon. And I want to say, I want to say that Starving Zoe is available on Godless. Also, I think, I don't know. I'll I, double uh, check. If it is, I'll throw it down there, the link. So we can yeah, get you. I out. haven't, um, I have the, the new, the new Death's Head people dead sky uh your guess is as good as mine uh mm -hmm. i haven't haven't really uh talked to those guys much so uh i don't i don't know if the godless links are still up because i know they had to take everything down when uh they they uh switched hands and they had to re-release them i know there's a lot of a lot of those old Death's Head books, even some of the Splatter Western Death's Head books that aren't available right now. I think I saw Mike Innenbach today say no, that. No, I think I think he said they were all getting back up. So yeah, so it's it's uh, they're all they're all coming back out now. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. Starving Zoe is up on Godless. Is it okay? And also yeah. the uh, the audio book was released uh, a couple of weeks ago, and oh, I, wow. I I'm not a big fan of audio books, and especially if it's one of mine. Um, because I go back and I, I listen to it and I'm like, oh man, I shouldn't have said that. Or, oh, I should have, I should have said that differently or just, you know, there's, there's nothing worse than, than somebody reading you your own work. It's just, it's so horrible. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of actors don't go watch movies that they're in. Yeah. So, uh, it took me a long time before I even watched episodes of, of our podcast that we do of what's in the box. It took me a long time to get up the nerve <laughs> to just like play the episodes and poor Eric was is the one that does all the editing magic to them so he's watching them like over and over, over and over and over, and, over. <laughs> and I'm like yeah I can't even watch that yeah <laughs> uh, it's 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 tough it's it's really tough but I sat and I listened to the starving Zoe audiobook a couple of weeks ago and I was laughing you know and I'm and just I, I wrote it but I was laughing I mean that's the whoever whoever the narrator was I can't I can't think of his name right offhand I'm, I know I'm a horrible horrible uh guest I, I was so unprepared I, I can't remember the guy's name who uh narrated my own fine. damn book but uh <laughs> he did a really good job his delivery is is perfect there's a lot of people who say his voice is how they imagine the character while they were reading the print book so um that's perfect so he, yeah, yeah he that did, is he perfect did, he did a really good job nice. and I've, awesome. I've got a lot of uh got a lot of codes left over for free downloads so if any, anybody watching this wants that, uh, just hit me up on either my website or my social media, and I'll be more than happy to give you a free code. I've got UK codes and USA codes. So, right. so yeah, Look just if you want to want to kick back for about four hours and listen to the most screwed up love story ever written, I'll be more than happy to treat you to it. <laughs> All right. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, hopefully, yeah, we'll get a lot me. of people out to see you at Texas Author Con July 14th and 15th in the Dallas area. Um, so come out, um, stop by the event. We'll have a link to the Eventbrite um, 
in the description of the video. It is a free event, but if you want to be eligible for the door prizes, you have to sign up for an Eventbrite ticket. Yeah, right. it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good thing, and uh, I I can't I wait say, for it to happen. Tell your wife we said hi. She just popped. Uh, in yeah, she she uh she is trying to uh, crawl underneath the camera. <laughs> Don't <laughs> worry about that. We we love interruptions. So yeah, <laughs> tell her we said hi. <laughs> stairs but i'm <laughs> <laughs> awesome all right well thank you and we'll see you all in the next episode all right bye Take guys it easy. thank you